Hello, Anthony Betts, Discussion 9, uh, Judgment and Decision Making. Uh, one thing as a retired law enforcement officer I get asked a lot is, um, have you ever shot any, anyone? Well, the answer is yes. Um, three times in my career, I was forced to use my weapon to take another person's life, to defend others or myself. Um, it's the ultimate scenario that you never want to face in your career. I will say that. Uh, you're trained for it, you're trained very well for it, and you're equipped for it. And you're expected in those situations to make the right decision, to use good judgment and make an informed decision based on your experience and training and the impact that it will have. So you're almost forced in training to not only make the decision, but consider how the decision will play in the aftermath. Um, the first shooting I was ever involved in was a, a felon who was a fugitive from justice. He had fled the state of Florida into the state of Alabama. He had robbed a convenience store um, and he had Sean killed a lady who was seven months pregnant. A uh, state trooper attempted to stop him. In the midst of that, the trooper's life was taken by this same person. So once I got the car inside and ran the tag and did all the things that you do to figure out who this person is, it came to be an exact match on a broadcast that we had received earlier in the day. Um, about this person to be on the lookout, or a bolo as they call them. Uh, old terminology would be an APB. Um, both mean the same thing. So it was a very fast moment. Uh, he, he got out of his car, had a weapon turned, and before he could fire, I shot him. Uh, unfortunate, but it did happen. And Many policemen today are faced with the same situation, but I will say that when you make a decision like that, it takes on average three to five seconds to make, and it takes six months to a year to investigate to determine all aspects of the incident and if the decision that was made by the officer was the right decision, uh, meaning was it justified. Uh, all three of mine were found justified. They took uh, three to six months to make uh, a decision so the circumstances there were less clouded than I think a lot of the ones that I'm, I'm seeing today on the news uh, they were pretty straightforward and I don't think anybody would have who had been in my position would have would have reacted any differently unfortunately there are many cases that I'm seeing today where I probably would have done something a little differently but we don't know, the, or I certainly don't know, the training, the experience of the person that had to make that decision to, to use their weapon. So I can't really critique it because I don't understand all aspects of it. Uh, the media does a great job of that, and so do communities. Uh, and as a result, recently, there's been a lot of racial tension that has been brought to light. But I just want to, in, in, in light of the judgment decision-making, just kind of announce that when you make a decision like that on the street as a police officer, you have seconds to decide. Uh, and depending on how long it takes you to decide is whether or not you go home at the end of that shift. There's a common theme in law enforcement where you're told you need to do whatever you have to do to get home at the end of every shift, meaning whatever opposition you face, you do it in such a way to make sure that you escape it unharmed. Um, and lethal force, unfortunately, has to be used uh, as a result of that. Um, so it's unfortunate, but I wanted to share that uh, in this week because we're talking about judgment decision making. And I wanted to share something that most people aren't faced with dealing with. Uh, so that it kind of gives a new perception of what it truly means to use good judgment and make a good decision. Thank you.